Let's go. We're the only ones who can save the planet and everything on it. I'm here today in the heart of Central Florida drinking this glass of water that I really wish was a Diet Coke. Ah, that's better. Okay. Today we're going to talk about how a judge's order to save this critically endangered species could make a difference. Why millions of migratory birds are flocking to Central Texas. The woman, the myth, the legend, Jane Goodall. She's learned everything she can possibly learn about chimps and what her next big move is. The newly discovered feeding technique caught on drone footage of the Eden whales. Plus tons more of great content so you already know what to do. Cultivate the like button and let's get started. Judge orders a plan for releasing more red wolves into the wild. This article says the judge has ordered federal government to come up with a plan to release more endangered red wolves from breeding programs to bolster the dwindling wild population. Terrence Boyle from the U.S. District Judge ordered Thursday directing U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service to draft a plan by March 1st for releasing captive bred wolves into the wolf's designated habitat in North Carolina. The preliminary ruling comes in a lawsuit filed last year by the Red Wolf Conservation Groups in a federal court in North Carolina, the only place in the world where the wild wolves still roam. Noting that as few as seven wild red wolves remain, Boyle said in his ruling that plaintiffs had demonstrated the extinction that is very real possibility in this case. The lawsuit had argued that the federal wildlife officials had violated the Endangered Species Act through actions that included a decision in 2015 to stop releasing captive bred wolves to bolster the wild population. And we already know what happens when we lose large apex predators. Since then, the federal agency has released one wolf from a wild refuge into North Carolina habitat about a year ago. Lawyers for the Fish and Wildlife Service have argued in the case that the Endangered Species Act gives it broad discretion in determining how, a, how to factor endangered species conservation into their decision making. A spokesperson for the agency didn't immediately respond to an email seeking comment late Friday afternoon. The Wolf Conservancy Group are grateful the U.S. and Fish and Wildlife Service will finally abide the, its responsibility to protect this critically endangered wolf. The thing is, we have to act now. We cannot wait until these animals go extinct. In fact, I'd like to throw a shout out there for a good friend of mine. He creates some of the best videos I've seen. It's Backyard Expeditions, and he talks about the de-extinction of animals. And he really covers all the topics. And you can actually find him in the comments every so often in my videos. And I just want to give him a big shout out. He does some great work, and he's really working hard to help conserve and preserve these animals in wild places. So uh, thank you for all you do, man. Why millions of migratory birds are flocking to Central Texas? It's due to a drought. And... It says, they say the early bird gets the worm in the case of the American robin known scientifically as Tardis migratoris because they have some of the most beautiful migratory spectacles we have them here in my yard. It's beautiful every year. I've actually been doing a lot of consideration on what I should plant in my yard because of the need of these beautiful migrating bird species. Their food of choice is actually the ashes, juniper, uh, juniper berries. And from my research, I found that they uh, feed, I think, 60% on fruits and then other things like insects and worms and stuff they find in the soil. But during the winter time, ashes juniper berries are typically found in abundance in the American Southwest, which is where you'll find this migratory bird. Unfortunately, due to continuing drought conditions in their region, ash juniper berries never fully materialized this winter. And as a result, the American robins have had to migrate to an area where they did, which happens to be Central Texas which is sad and I don't know for sure if it's climate change or natural course of action, but it, it's such an eerie similarity to what happened with our beautiful passenger pigeons and our beautiful uh, ivory-billed woodpeckers and uh, a lack of food. And these migratory birds travel long range and they have to have dependable food. I'm glad to hear that they're able to find the food they need in Central Texas. If there's anything you can do for the American Robins, uh, maybe just go on Google, find out some of your native um, flora so you can plant it. And then perhaps when they migrate through, which in my case, I think around March, I start seeing uh, quite a few of those beautiful American robins. Jane Goodall announces she's all about lizards now. And it goes on to say, Looking forward to exploring the new chapter in her storied 60-year career. Jane Goodall's issued 
A statement Friday announcing she's all about lizards now. Gila monsters, bearded dragons, Komodo dragons, and the list goes on and on. You name it. If it's a lizard, then I probably like it. The 86-year-old scientist who explained that while chimpanzees had a good run, it is time to turn her studies towards a group of reptiles, which are over 6,000 thrilling species to enjoy. Hopefully, it's only a matter of time until I consider one of the world's foremost experts on skinks. So she really likes skinks. We have a few native skinks here in Florida, uh, at least four or five that I can think of. I'm going to spend some time living in the Gecko Society for a bit. It's got a beautiful picture of her holding this, uh, it's some form of an iguana. I can't be sure if that's a rock iguana. It doesn't look like a green iguana, but uh, she's in the Galapagos Islands in Ecuador. Uh, Dr. Goodall added that Jane Goodall Institute would immediately begin reallocating all its resources from protecting great apes from poachers and trafficking to protecting geckos from snakes. So uh, there's something there. There's That's the end of the story. So uh, there's more to that story, and I haven't dug deep enough to figure out what she means by protecting geckos from snakes. I feel like there's something more there to that story. Now this is some uh, a great video I saw um, trending. Actually not trending. I don't know the last time on YouTube I saw a wildlife video trending. Every time I scroll down the trending page, I see 50 songs, mostly rap, a few other ones, Jeffree Star, uh, Mr. Beast filling his house with slime. I never see anything on the trending page for wildlife conservation. It's truly sad that YouTube doesn't take this seriously and that uh, I guess it's based on the algorithm of viewer engagement, which is sad. That means that we have to spread the word and make people interested in this. Let's take a look at this possibly once in a lifetime footage of the Eden Whale's new feeding technique. This extraordinary behavior where the whale treads water is thought to have developed because pollution has made the Gulf of Thailand a hypoxic environment. Sewage outflows from the land have caused all the oxygen in the water to be used up, except at the surface. This means the whale's fish prey can only live at the surface layer. By treading water and keeping the corners of their mouth below the surface, a flow is created pulling the fish into the whale's mouth. In the panic, some of the fish also seem to jump out of the water and into the whale's mouth. So that is an incredible story and showing how some species are able to adapt better than others to a changing environment. That's a great story for our American Robins and another great story of the Eden whales and their ability to adapt. Does not mean they've overcome these situations. It means that they got through these situations. And we just don't know how many of these kind of situations these animals can actually get through. So really it's up to us to do things like make sure we're not polluting our golfs and stuff with toxic sewage because that's just horrible. We, we all know better than that. Come on. I want to thank everybody for watching this good morning outdoors video. If you liked it, please cultivate that like button and help this channel grow into a channel that it should be so we can get on the trending page as well. If you like this video, go and check out some of our other videos and I appreciate you. You'll have a good rest of your day. Happy Saturday. Good morning to you. Peace.